Hi, I'm Richard Atkinson. This video will feature an incredible example of pedal point in the Seventh Symphony of Anton Bruckner. Pedal point is a harmonic term describing a sustained note, most often in the bass, over which dissonant harmonies are played. In other words, chords that do not contain the held note. The term originates, of course, from organ music, in which the pedal can be held down indefinitely by the foot, while the hands play changing harmonies above. Even though this is a video about Bruckner, I'm going to play for you a classic and spectacular example of pedal point in actual organ music, near the end of J.S. Bach's sublime G major fantasia, BWV 572. The pedal plays a low D, sustained through nine measures, while the hands play changing harmonies above. The music following this abrupt diminished chord is also spectacular, but once again, since this is a video about Bruckner, I'll let you take the initiative if you want to discover the rest of the piece for yourself by following the link in the description. Although Bruckner is primarily recognized today for his choral music and monumental symphonic masterpieces, he was also a renowned organist in his time, as portrayed in this silhouette, and many critics have noted the organ-like nature of his symphonies. The intricate counterpoint and the thunderous chords in the brass, followed by silence that allows them to reverberate, and his symphonies are often performed and recorded in large cathedrals, presumably to augment this acoustic effect. Near the end of the Seventh Symphony's opening movement is a striking crescendo passage, consisting of an enormous pedal point. The pedal tone itself is played by the double basses and by the timpani, but instead of just playing a few dissonant harmonies above, the rest of the orchestra actually modulates to various other keys while the pedal tone remains constant. Anyone familiar with Bruckner symphonies recognizes this kind of harmonic meandering as one of the hallmarks of his thematic material. Eventually, the harmonies return to consonants at the end of the passage, concluding one of the most breathtaking moments in the symphonic literature. 